outside Jimmy Class's mobile home in Clearwater. Symbols of American pride hang not just front and center, but on the side of his home, in the back. America is, after all, the only home this 66-year-old has ever known. I moved to the U.S. in 1959. How long have you been here? 64 years. But after more than a half of a century in the U.S. where he's lived, worked, went to school, got married, had kids, paid his taxes. Mr. Class, you will be entitled to retirement benefits. Even voted. Class says in 2020. Instead of receiving my first check. He discovered. I didn't have any thoughts. He's not a U.S. citizen. I just was like blindsided. Class says it all came to light after he applied for the Social Security benefits he paid into his entire working life. You gotta be kidding me. You just watched a snippet from a news report about a Florida man named Jimmy Class who found out that he's not actually a United States citizen until he applied for Social Security. And it's surprising, not just because he's not a citizen and thought he was all this time, but because he's also presumably here illegally since he's not a citizen and he doesn't have a green card or a visa. So, as you saw, he said he was blindsided, and I would be too if this happened to me. Now, he's what we'd refer to as a dreamer today, even though that wasn't actually a thing when he was a child and brought to the U.S. But long story short, he was born in Canada to a Canadian mom and an American father, and he was brought here when he was just two years old, and he's lived here ever since and just always thought he was an American citizen. And he's never really had a reason to question that because he was even approved to serve in the U.S. military, but ultimately chose not to because he got a different job. He was also approved to be a police officer in New Jersey, and he's never had a reason to not think he was a citizen. He was even given a Social Security card, which, according to an immigration attorney that the news station talked to, said that's a little bit weird. But the requirements back then might have been different than what they are today. Because, you know, if you're here today and you're not a citizen, that would be very difficult. But now he's being denied Social Security benefits that he's paid into his entire life. And he's finding out that becoming a citizen is actually a lot harder than he previously thought. WVSN News explains, after learning he wasn't really a U.S. citizen, Class formally applied for status but was denied. U.S. Customs and Immigration Services wouldn't share details when we contacted them about Class's case. In an email, a spokesperson stated that they don't talk about individual cases. But in a 2022 denial letter, the agency stated Class didn't provide enough evidence to prove his father lived in the United States for 10 years before Class was born, which is a requirement for a child seeking citizenship through a parent. Class contacted Senator Marco Rubio's office for help and hired an immigration attorney and even a genealogist who found records linking Class's dad to the U.S. in the years before he was born. Still, his fight continues to this day. By voting as a non-U.S. citizen, Class broke federal law each time he voted in an American election. So, just to recap here, he finds out he's not a citizen Citizen, gets denied Social Security, then tries to become an official citizen, and then gets denied again to add insult to injury. So if I were him, I would be absolutely pissed off. And I genuinely do feel bad for him because he was brought here as a child through no fault of his own. He's lived and worked here his entire life. For all intents and purposes, he's an American. And of course, he should be given the Social Security that he paid into all of his life. The fact that that's even a question is outrageous to me. But it's sad that he seemingly doesn't have the same sympathy for other people in his position. And I say this because, if you couldn't tell already, this man is a Trump supporter. In fact, he has a Trump poster displayed proudly on his front door, who rose to popularity, by the way, because of his hawkishness on the issue of immigration. Now, he's just a single person. He has no power, so I'm not going to be overly tough on him. But it is ironic that after Trump lied about millions of undocumented immigrants supposedly voting for Democrats in federal elections, one of the few instances where we have a non-citizen voting, well, it happens to be one of Donald Trump's supporters. And I think that this also speaks to a broader trend of conservatives not caring about an issue until it affects them personally. And Jimmy isn't the first person who's found himself in this predicament. For example, in 2014, Mario Hernandez, an Army veteran and federal employee, wanted to celebrate his retirement from the U.S. Bureau of Prisons by taking a cruise. The problem was, it was the first time he was leaving the country, and he had to apply for a passport. But when he tried to get an American passport, he found out 
He wasn't actually a citizen. There's another man named Raul Rodriguez who found out that his birth certificate was actually fraudulent and he was actually not a U.S. citizen. He was a Mexican citizen, despite literally being responsible for the deportation of thousands of people himself during his tenure as an agent for U.S. Customs and Border Patrol. And as a result, he lost his job, his law enforcement friends, and his sense of self, apparently. And to that I say, may he be given the same amount of sympathy as he gave to the thousands of people that he deported. But in general, this demonstrates why empathy is so important, right? All too often, conservatives don't give a fuck about any issue unless it affects them personally. And when it comes to Jimmy, you know, I am curious to know if he's had a change of heart at all about Trump, or at least has been a little bit more introspective about Donald Trump. I'm assuming no, since he still has the Trump poster on his door. But I mean, you're part of the problem when trump whines about immigration incessantly you're also included there now of course the subtext is that he's a white guy and in our deeply white supremacist country we don't treat all immigrants the same we treat white immigrants very differently than black and brown ones so i'm assuming and i don't know for sure if this is what he thinks but i'm assuming that he would think he's different than the other immigrants because you know, he did it the correct way or he just didn't know he made a mistake, whereas everyone else, they're coming here illegally on purpose and that's bad, right? But I am curious to know uh, whether or not he's had any change of views. Uh, but one thing has certainly changed, at least when it comes to his perception of America. And uh, since learning that he's not a citizen, he uh, he's pretty pissed and he is actually thinking about leaving America. What happens if this doesn't get resolved? Well, I guess uh, they get to give my money to someone else. Will it make you look at America differently? I'll probably move back to Canada. You would consider leaving? Yep, yep, and say bye-bye America. So with regard to his politics, that's still up in the air. But as for America itself, he's burnt. And look, I don't blame him for feeling that way. Because if you paid all this money into this system that you're not going to be able to benefit from, of course, you're going to feel burnt out. You're going to feel frustrated with that system and feel like there's been an injustice. But what I want him to understand is that this is the same way that other undocumented immigrants feel. They pay taxes. They pay in this system. They contribute the, to the economy. They're Americans for all intents and purposes like him, but they also don't get to see the benefits of citizenship. They're denied citizenship. They can't vote in federal elections. They're fucked. And they're in this perpetual state of exploitation to where if they have an employer and they're being abused or exploited, who can they complain to? Because if you complain to anyone else, you could give yourself up, right? So this story is really important to me because a lot of conservatives and just Americans in general, I think, who gripe about immigration, they don't understand how fundamentally broken our system is. In many instances, it's impossible to do it the right way, even though everybody says, you know, if you want to come here, that's what you've got to do. And even though right wing media creates this caricature of some criminal immigrants jumping the border to beat up innocent Americans or sell us drugs that we definitely don't want, by the way, um, you know, it's so much different than that in reality. For example, when Trump was president talking about the wall and whatnot, he was failing to acknowledge that visa overstays repeatedly outpaced the number of people illegally jumping the border. In 2022, 3.7% of people with work and student visas ended up overstaying their visas, and of the 11 or so million undocumented Americans, 40% are estimated to be here because they overstayed their visas. That's actually a more conservative estimate that I've seen. And on top of that, a majority of undocumented immigrants have been here for more than 10 years, meaning these people have lives here. They have jobs, friends, families. So if you're unable to get your visa renewed, it's not so easy to just up and leave everything behind. And about 2.3 million of the 11 million undocumented people here are dreamers who, like Jimmy, were brought here at a very young age and they have lives here and they don't want to go back or they don't want to go to a country that they're not familiar with that they were born in. But I mean, that's not to say that there aren't people here who enter through the border because that's true. But why they're entering is also really important. More than 800,000 immigrants applied for asylum in 2022, and more than 2 million cases haven't been processed because guess what? There's only 1,500 judges and asylum officers to process 
all of these claims. Now, at the end of 2023, encounters at the U.S.-Mexico border hit a record high of nearly 250,000 individuals. But of those individuals, more than 12,000 were unaccompanied minors and over 100,000 were families. Single adults accounted for more than 135,000. But as people are desperately seeking a better life here and applying for asylum, right-wing media referred to all of this and the record U.S.-Mexico encounters as an invasion which is a propaganda term to use because it primes people to think of images of violence. We're being invaded, so of course these people are here to hurt us, right? Well, no, in actuality, these are people, a lot of kids, by the way, by themselves, just seeking asylum, which is a human right, by the way, protected by both domestic and international law. Now, to the extent that there is a crisis at the border, it's that we have 1,500 people processing all of these asylum claims, which has incapacitated our system. So, yeah, there's a crisis, but that can be solved by just giving more people the ability to process asylum claims, get more judges to be able to process asylum claims. So it's a crisis of our own making is what I'm trying to say. But rather than expanding our capabilities or reforming our immigration system so people already here have a pathway to citizenship, we've chosen to just double down on demonizing some immigrants. And I say some because not all immigrants are equal. Ukrainian or Canadian immigrants like Jimmy are treated very differently than Haitian or Latin American immigrants. And there's a reason for that. And it's purposeful, by the way. But what a lot of Americans don't realize is that it is almost impossible to do it the right way because our immigration system is completely fucking broken. And I don't think even liberals understand or leftists understand just how bad it is. Take it from my friend Olai Mjolloran, who's an attorney, and she's also a bohemian immigrant. Now, on a past episode of Leftist Mafia, she gave us just a glimpse into what she's been dealing with as an immigrant herself and how impossible it is to navigate the American immigration system and how costly it is. Listen to what she has to say. Nobody wants to be in a country as a second class citizen. Nobody. Nobody wants, there is nobody that has the ability to apply to become a citizen or to have a work visa or a green card or these things the lawful way. And they are just choosing not to do it. They are literally not eligible. That is what Amer America's, America's immigration system, not only one, have they created an immigration system that mirrors a criminal system that doesn't need to, because I know it's hard to think about it because that's all you ever see is a world where you, 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 they detain people and they, that doesn't make sense. Why are people becoming criminalized based on what should just be? This is this is paperwork. This is this is immigration stuff. It doesn't have to be a criminal situation, but they make it that, and they make it that for specific populations. Because you ain't never seen no bunch of Italians at the border uh, or being in no detention images or blah blah blah. Or heard about a large? What? What? You don't hear that? You don't hear that? But you hear it. But that, but but whenever you see these pictures, they can't wait to show all these pictures of the Haitians being chased on 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 horseback and being whipped and mm -hmm. all kind of Hispanic people in cages and stuff. Because that's what it really really is about is is keeping these specific populations out and also we don't talk about how expensive the immigration system is the costs associated with immigration applications and all these things are astronomical you don't get them back that's one two what happens is if you apply let's say you do have a you have a you have opt or you have a work permit or you have a green card and you apply to try to renew it or you apply for something you when you once you once once you uh, apply for the thing you're not allowed to you once your thing expires you can't work right you can't work and earn money until this thing gets approved but you're not allowed to go to your own country you go back to your own country because they will consider your application abandoned abandon get rid of it keep the money but you can't stay in the country and afford to be here and apply for those things you see how all these different ways is set up to make it impossible and then on top of that just legally navigating i'm an attorney i'm an attorney who has been looking at my immigration situation since i was 14 and it's impossible the average person the things that i will miss or make a mistake on or something like this the average person can't navigate that they can't they can't afford it it costs so much money my just to give you an idea my company now in the interest of transparency so y'all can understand just how inaccessible it is been here for 15 years y'all see the career i had to make for myself to even make it possible that someone could try to sponsor me for a green to try to get me a green card the immigration fees are thirty three thousand dollars when i got denied and I had already at this point I had managed to get like a different visa, but once you get denied on that one, you gotta you gotta go. You have to go to the embassy. It's a very it's a whole thing. Like um, so I get there. I'm walking home from Blink Fitness, 
literally, and I get the email that you asked as issued a decision, it's a denial and I have to leave the country. Literally leave the country the next day you have to leave because once you get denied, you're on a countdown. And if you stay for a certain amount of time, you're blacklisted for a certain and then I, and, and just to give you an idea how stressful that is, you have to go, even when you're approved, like let's say you apply for a visa and you're approved, you get the approval notice, you still have to go to the embassy and do an interview and basically convince them another time and they can deny you for whatever reason, whatever person at the at the thing. And to give you when I go, so that is the most, I can't tell you how stressful that is, 15 years of that. Uh, and then you go, this last time when I went to go get my visa, this lady is this old Bahamian lady in front of me who had who had been living in the U.S. for a long time. She had a green card and she she didn't understand the immigration rules or whatever it is. She comes. She thought she had to come to the embassy in order in order to to apply. They tell her she needed to do it this time or not this time or come in person. Either way, they tell her, no, she can't get it and she can't go back into the U.S. The woman has lived. This is an old lady who has lived in the U.S. for like in Florida for like 30 years, has a home there, dog there. And they're like. So, well, yep. And that's the shit that you, you're in there like behind this person, like getting ready to have a stroke because that's what it is. And I've experienced so many, so many other friends and so many Bahamians and so many other people that have come to, to the U.S. for a certain period of time and really struggled to try to be here to stay. Like it's, it's, it's an impossible journey. I have five sisters. I have five siblings and my sister, three sisters that are just as intelligent, just as oh, decorating all these different things. My sister Duan, who's my doctor equivalent, didn't couldn't go to US med school because it's impossible because the standards for international students, like that on average, they will only let like three to seven international students into a, a class. Because what's the point if they're not going to be able to get employed after? No one wants to employ them because no one wants to take on the sponsorship of them. So it makes it that much harder to even get into the schools. And for me to be able to get a job, for me to make myself competitive, the fact that I'm still in America, I worked six jobs, six legal jobs in law school. When the average law student, you could only work one. That's how stressful those are, but you'll make a lot of money. So I had to work a job, but I worked six like demanding law jobs that would pay you, but I can't accept the pay because it'll violate the terms of my visa. So I'm broke. I'm working to death just make to make myself far more competitive than everybody else so that I could still be sitting here talking to you all today. So in conclusion, our immigration system is arbitrary. There's no clear and concise standards. It's overtly racist and it's fundamentally broken overall. And the only reason why Ole is in a position to now apply for a green card is because she became a public figure. Do you think that that's something that most immigrants will be able to achieve? Of course not. So a large number of undocumented immigrants, that's the result of our system. It's not their fault. That's our fault. That's the fault of our system. Because when you make getting a green card nearly impossible and provide no pathway to citizenship to people who've been here since they were children, what do you expect? So obviously we need immigration reform so people can do things the right way. But when it comes to people who weren't able to do it the right way, well, what do we do about them? We grant them amnesty. That's what we do. We let them stay and we give them a clear path to citizenship because that's the right thing to do. They're Americans. They've made lives here. They have friends here. They have jobs here. They contribute to the economy. They pay taxes. They should be citizens. Now, if you think that that's outrageous, that I'm just some psychotic far left crazy person, let me remind you that Ronald Reagan, no lefty, by the way, granted amnesty to millions of undocumented immigrants back in 1986. And I don't think it's debatable whether or not he's some far left lunatic in favor of open borders. And I think that people especially have a right to seek out a better life here, especially if our policies destabilized or destroyed their home countries. I think we owe it to them to offer them a better life here. But I mean, when you see even the prospect of admitting people from Gaza here, Americans throw a temper tantrum. But there's not much complaints about Ukrainian immigrants or immigrants from the UK or Australia. There's a reason for that. But much like Jimmy Class, undocumented immigrants the ones that are already here, they contribute to our society. They pay into the economy, they pay taxes, and they become Americans for all intents and purposes, just like him. So perhaps we should all try to be a little bit more understanding towards immigrants and not just, you know, change our perceptions once something affects us individually. Because at the end of the day, we're all just human beings just trying to live our lives. And I think we all are entitled to be able to do that. Jimmy should be able to stay here, as should the millions of people who have already made lives here as well.